All right. Grateful to be joined now by Ted Scott, caddy for the number one player in the world, Scotty Scheffler, winners at the Dell Technologies match play. Congrats. Thanks, John. That's pretty crazy, man, just hearing you say that. <laughs> right? You know, I saw a funny tweet from our friend Gino Benelli that was a screenshot of his now weekly 5.30 p.m. <laughs> Sunday reminder to send a congratulatory text to Ted Scott. That's pretty funny. I got a really fun text also from him uh, with that. And then I got another message from another friend who's who's sitting in bed with his wife. And all of a sudden you hear an alarm go up. And he goes, honey, what's that alarm? And it's like, oh, you got to text Teddy. So they're really clever coming up with that stuff. And it makes me laugh. Yeah, I mean, you guys are on quite a run. You know, three out of the last five, one of the quickest ascents to number one in the world. There's tons of storylines wrapped up in this win, I guess. What are some of the emotions for you? Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of happened so fast that I, I didn't even know that was possible until this week. So, uh, you know, I guess maybe after Friday, I think I saw something where they said, if you know, if he wins and this person does this and that, I was like, wow, I didn't even know that was, you know, a thing. So it's it's, it's happened so quick. And obviously, uh, Saturday and Sunday playing 36 holes on each day, um, you know, you're just putting one golf shot in front of the other. So I really haven't had time to reflect on it or or do anything emotional. We did have a really fun, uh, fun dinner last night with Scotty, his, his family, his wife's family, and uh, all their friends. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I'm just now I'm on the road back to Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, heading back home to see your family. Hey, NBC flashed an awesome graphic of Scotty's career match play record going back to his U.S. Junior Amateur win. He's 25, nine and four now. And I know your partnership will continue to be marked with lots of first times. Uh, what was your approach heading into the week, given the match play format? And then what more did you learn about your, your horse after seeing him perform? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, he, he was a rookie at the Ryder Cup. And, um, you know, I guess he went out and birdied the first four holes playing against John Rahm as a rookie in singles. So that, that right there said, hey, this guy's got to be tough because to do that as a rookie, I mean, probably the nervous I've ever been as a caddy is standing on that first tee you know, in a Ryder Cup, um, it's singles, you know, it's a little, little easier when you have a partner and another caddy and two other players. But uh, when it's just you and your player, man, it's, it's pretty nerve wracking. So uh, that kind of gave me a clue. And then, you know, he, the fact that he, he lost in the finals last year. So you go, okay, this guy, you know, won the U.S. junior. He's obviously good at this, right? Um, and then coming into the week, he's playing great, got a lot of momentum, confidence. And then, of course, he went to college at UT. So everything was clicking. Probably the biggest hurdle in that situation is expectations. You know, managing, uh, sometimes it, it seems so easy, it's difficult. You know what I mean? And, and that's where I think he's really good at just putting one shot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, hitting one shot at a time. Well, that's a great segue. Um, you're a great follow on Instagram, and you had an awesome post last night. You referenced <laughs> the timeout with his family. And then you also gave your Sunday sermon, which, you know, you talked about being in the present, overcoming fear and anxiety. Uh, there was a highlight. Well, there's many highlights on Sunday, but one that really popped out to me in that final with Kisner and Dwayne Bach. I mean, and you guys have had some battles before when you were with Bubba. You know, you got the better of those two. Great team. Uh, mm -hmm. But on 12, that par five, your man was three up, and he kind of misplayed a tricky chip shot that bounced into the bunker, and it looked like there could be an opening for Kiz. And then he got in there and hooped the bunker shot. It was an awesome celebration after that that cool highlight. Yeah, that was crazy. You know, um, that was a that was an interesting hole. Um, he putted it in the water. Um, you know, I think it was Thursday. Uh, well, it might have been Wednesday against against Poulter. So he had an eagle putt and putted it into the water there from that same location. And uh, and that chip shot was so hard. I mean, you know, TV doesn't really do it justice, but he could chip that in the water very easily. So. He walked around and surveyed it. And I think if uh, if I would have had guts, I'd have said, dude, he had a big flop, you know. <laughs> but I was like, he asked me what I thought. I was like, look, man, let's just try to get it on that shelf and make a putt. You know, he's a great putter. And so he, he said, how do you see doing it? And I said, I think you should bump it through the fringe there. And, uh, you know, he hit it. And, you know, I think he, he got a little too aggressive. I wanted him to kind of hit it more at it and let it fall to the left. And he said in an interview, he got too aggressive. And, um, you know, went back in the bunker. But the coolest part about him is he didn't go, dang it, you idiot, or, you know, beat his club. He just went, okay. You know, we cleaned his club off. He got in the bunker and tried to hit the next best shot. And sure enough, it went in. So it's just, it's crazy. Match play, you just, you, you know, 
anything can happen in match play. It's wild. Yeah. Well, hey, I saw a highlight earlier in the day of Seve Ballesteros doing the same thing at the Masters. Uh, <laughs> so it was cool to see that happen again in real time. Hey, thanks for your time, Ted. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.